In this week's special edition of Underground Artist, I'm excited to share with you bits and pieces of an interview that I was able to do with British singer-songwriter, guitarist, artist coach, and overall life enthusiast, Luke Kincannon. Oh, not doing nothing at all, doing nothing at all with my life. funny to me to just realize how English my accent sounds to you. Yes. <laughs> Life. Thank you so much for being on this Underground Artist episode with me here today. Thanks for asking. It's really fun. It's really fun to talk with you. And, and then we're talking with other people too. So hello, everybody. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Oh, it's so fun to talk about. I uh, I remember my dad picking me up from school when I would have been sort of six, and he had a like a little penny whistle, an Irish tin whistle. And he just whipped it out, and he in the playground as we were leaving school, he played um, this Irish melody, the Lonesome Boatman, really kind of magical melody mm -hmm. and he did this with this little piece of metal and I was six and I was just like this is the best magic trick ever <laughs> like how he just took this piece of metal out and there's suddenly like magic happening growing up with a musical dad uh he, pla he practiced a lot of Irish bagpipes when I was growing up as well so I'd be constantly hearing these very old tunes and the cool thing about folk music, the tradition we come from, is everyone just has a go. Yeah. And if someone, you know, starts a song and they're like, ah, <laughs> someone will go, lovely, lovely, I, Michael. I know <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People are encouraging and they really listen. Interesting. And, and actually, that's what we need, right? Real respect and listening and real encouragement. And I think that's why I'm a musician, because I grew up in that culture. I sort of feel like I'm somewhere between Van Morrison and Leonard Cohen. So I love that Van Morrison thing of making beautiful rhythmic melodies. And I grew up with that. Mm -hmm. And from the heart, I also love the Leonard Cohen thing of going really deep with poetry. Mm -hmm like really trying to go as deep and as, to, to use words to, to touch the truth and to hopefully touch that truth in other people, touch people deeply from a deep place inside so it goes to a deep place in them. Yeah. And, you know, I think good poetry and good music changes people. Yeah, it, uh, it, 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 hopefully it changes the world. So <laughs> I, I like both. I like really beautiful music and I love poetry. So I try and bring both together. Yeah, yeah, to create something that just transcends both words and music. That, I mean, that's the goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The song that you started this interview with, um, the single that we put out at the beginning of the month, Doing Nothing, I feel like that is pretty quintessential because it's simple and melodic and I just try to be really honest. So it's, you know, like just being honest about my UFC, <laughs> UFC watching. I just think I, I, where I'm just like, like, so yeah, trying to be, trying to use words to really be specific. And I think that that's what poetry can be good at is um, evoking and yeah, being, being truthful. So yeah. that's a good example. Uh, yeah, and, and continuing with that, I, I'm really curious to see how this single kind of fits into your album that's coming up, The Ecstatic Bird and the Burning, uh, that's coming out pretty soon here. How does it fit into to your album? Well, how does it how does it fit into the album that there's a sort of conscious ego 
everyday self that's like, I'm going to make a really good song. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it's going to be, you know, have a strong chorus and it's going to be you know, all these ideas. But then actually the really, the gems often just sort of come in out of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, um, you know, the way so many different traditions talk about that, like in, in Celtic tradition, there would be the fairies, right? Mm -hmm. It would be like, in a dream, you get whispered a song uh, from another world. Um, in the Christian tradition, it's like um, the spirit comes through. Mm -hmm. So in answer to your question, <laughs> a very tangential answer, um, I tried to make space for the spirit to come through. And the title says it well, like they're sort of ecstatic songs in a burning world. Mm -hmm. So there's like the suffering of being in a dying time in the world and the ecstasy that we're here at all. Yeah. Yeah. And that it's beautiful. It's a beautiful world yeah. as well as a, the human world is pretty crazy just now. Wow, I think that's true, yeah. Yeah, I've toured every summer to some extent for a long time every year, yeah. I'm actually really quite happy to not tour because it's so tiring and yeah. bewildering. And I'm a bit sad because I love getting the songs to people, you know, like sharing them. And I put so much into the songs that it's great to give Right. to be able to really give into people and you can't there's nothing quite like singing them for people yeah with people like right. get you know inviting them to sing the choruses with you and yeah. friends and peers on the music scene i see them like booking gigs and tours and then having to postpone them and then and that just seems so stressful, right? To be like, booked a load of gigs for February and then be like, we're cancelling all the gigs in February <laughs> after doing all of that work, right? It's hard enough already to put on a tour without having to constantly move it. So I do, I do feel like just waiting. Um, I feel sad about it and um, just really want to respect public health, Like any unnecessary movement at the moment risks lives and risks health. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you want to hear the songs, then one way is we're having a, a single launch party on the 6th of November and it's all on my website, lukeconcannon.com. So you can come and we'll play a little set that day. Um, plan is to, to do a little, party every month play some songs live streamed and then we're releasing a single a month as well okay. okay that's a great plan especially now kind of teasing it out in in little chunks because it can be overwhelming to get an album at a time right an album of music and and that kind of is phased out of people listening to albums straight through or putting on a record and and just listening to it that's a really really good decision i think um and it's just exciting e each to have a have a little party each month with a new single yeah thank you yeah I, I feel excited about it because um it it feels just fun to like one month a song a month just shine a light on that song yeah and um so you know we put the first single out on the second of october and then that's doing nothing. That's, as you know, that's out on the videos on my website and um, it's on Spotify and all those places. Um, I invite people listening to go onto the website, check out the video, and if you like it, please sign the mailing list so I can send you the new songs. Oh, and when people sign the mailing list, I send you a free song, an oh. unreleased song. Um, so, yeah, uh, and then on the 6th of November, we release your heart is in my chest 
which is a love song um, about meeting your cousin, Stephanie Hollenberg, and she sings on that with me. And um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're having a launch party that night and we're, uh, I'll play a set of songs and um, it's actually going to be American time. It'll be 3 p.m. Okay. It's uh, evening time in, the, in, in Europe where a lot of my audience is. Um, that, all the details are on my site. So it'll be a fun party. That'd um, be awesome. So everyone's invited. Cool. So what would you say separates a great musical artist from an outstanding musical artist? Wow. Devotion. Mm. Devotion. Dedication, devotion. Last question. What is the biggest piece of advice that you would give young artists in today's world of music? Keep your banjo in tune and don't set fire to your tea. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. I, ex I expected nothing less. <laughs> Always keep your banjo in tune and don't set fire to your tea. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, advice... Um, what's it like to really tune into your own inner quiet little voice and what is it saying and then being bold and following it and being generous yeah thank you so much Luke it's been a pleasure I know you're a very busy man so thank you for cutting some time out for me um, it's been a been an honor chatting with yeah you. it's great to see you and um um yeah i don't want to be so busy that i can't hang out with you so yeah <laughs>